somebody put your hands together for Jesus. He's awesome in this place. Come and raise your voice and make a shout of free unto Jesus. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen. We give you praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you just want to put your hands together this week. Jesus, you are one of the two. 
lifted up all over the nations. Welcome all our family online, our online family and church across the nations. Welcome to our Sunday first service. Say heavily, Father, once again we have come from different upbringings works of life for a new experience empower us illuminate the eyes of our understanding give us a seeing eye and a hearing ear that we may see like never before and hear from heaven as never before let the limits be broken let the embargoes be lifted off us in the name of Jesus, we destroy negative atmospheres. In the name of Jesus, we destroy right now the veil. We remove the veil that we might see clearly as we ought to see. In the name of Jesus, we break through. We break through unseen barriers. We break through invisible walls and barriers as we put our hands together right now in the name of Jesus whoever you are, wherever you are break through I command a breakthrough in this service I command a breakthrough in the atmosphere I command a breakthrough in the heavens. I command a breakthrough on the right and on the left breakthroughs everywhere in the name of Jesus limitations broken, restrictions broken, hindrances removed complication resolved in the name of Jesus thank you well go ahead put your hands together give the Lord a praise and a shout 
Amen. Give two people a high five that you may be seated in heavenly places for a new experience. Hallelujah. Uh, how many of you have had the opportunity to watch The Taste of Sin on Netflix? If you have, give me a wave offering. How many of you have? Uh, if you haven't, it's very, very important to share and to watch it on Netflix. This is our movie. This is our movie. It's the first time where a movie from the continent of Africa and something that speaks about the kingdom and the gospel uh, on Netflix and is trending and is among the first 10 and is number one in Nigeria, in the Bahamas and so many places. See if you can play it right now. See if you can play it right now. So if you don't, if you haven't watched uh, Taste of Sin on Netflix, it's very important that you do that. It's time to celebrate our own. It's time to celebrate what God has given us instead of always waiting to hear bad things, negative things, and celebrating others. Let's celebrate what is our own, the things that belong to us. Let's be proud of our own talk about our own than always spreading negative news. Have you heard? Have you heard? Then we are spreading negative reports. Why don't we spread good things? Let's talk about good things. Let's spread good things. If you have the tape, you can put it on the screen. And if not, I will just proceed. Say it again. Give us volume, please. I want the latest one, the latest one, the latest one, the latest one. Anyway, let me proceed. Let's make sure we have the latest one, okay? So we'll, let's make sure we have the latest one. But one of the things that concerns me is the attitude of believers. We spread things that don't edify and exalt. But when it comes to good things and things that concerns the kingdom, we have an attitude of apathy. You know, we, we really don't care too much. And it is, is an attitude of indifference. We hold back, we don't spread good things. And we always wait for negative things and then, hey, what is happening? Have you heard? Hey, Charlie, it's a shock. Hey, hey, hey. Turn to somebody and say, stop it, stop it, stop it. Spread good things. So I'm waiting to see that the numbers will climb higher and higher. And uh, we're coming up with another movie entitled The Curse Breaker. <laughs> Tell somebody, do you know you are a curse breaker? You, you're a curse breaker. Now we'll talk about that another day. But every one of you hearing me, wherever you are, whoever you are, if you take time, take stock and look at where you've come from where you've been and where you are you will realize that you're a curse breaker you're a curse breaker you've broken a curse and that makes you a game changer in your generation that is who you are you may not realize it right now I'm told that most times People who make history don't know when they are making history. People you hear that have made history don't know they are making history when they make history. They are just doing what they believe they are capable of doing. But it's not just capable of what you're doing, you're a curse breaker. You're breaking some new grounds. One of my daughters passed by my father's village and said to me, Dad, I understand why you pray the way you pray. I won't say anything apart from that. Whatever made her to say that means a lot to me that I understand what she was saying. Because for some of you, if you look at where you have come from, you live in the city, 
you look pretty beautiful, handsome, smell good. But if you go back to your origin and look at where you come from and where you, have, where you came from, you realize that you are a curse breaker. You realize that God, but for God, you won't be where you are. So be grateful. Don't lose your, don't lose your humanity. And be humble. Do right by others. Don't take credit for it. For it is not him that willeth, nor him that runs, but God that showeth mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God has shown you mercy. Please be merciful. Learn to show mercy to others because you are a product of mercy. You've come that far, not because of the school you attended or who your father and mother is. Sometimes when people get blessed and God gives people opportunity and show them his goodness to lead to repentance, they begin to now look at their family tree and they try to ascribe their success and what God has done to somebody in the family once upon a time who served God or did something right to merit where they are. You are shifting the poles. You are giving credit to somebody who don't deserve it. Accept that you don't deserve it. And yet you are blessed. Accept the fact that God showed you kindness and mercy. Don't try to ascribe it to anybody in your bloodline. Because if it comes to your bloodline and the family you come from, you will be nothing and have nothing. But God showed you mercy. Watch out. Coming soon, the curse breaker. Put your hands together and give God praise. I want to talk to you about a principle that I believe works. And I have seen it works, work over the years. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed back for bread. May I submit to you, whoever you, you might be and is, hearing the sound of my voice, that your ladder shall be greater. And I don't want this, your attitude of just sitting there looking at me and expecting me to lecture you. I'm not a lecturer. I came to prophesy. And I said, whoever you are, if you can hear me, your ladder will be greater. And if you believe it, then say something. Put your hands together and show some action and some emotion. If you, if you, if you, if you listen to all the different words of praise, every one of them requires action and some demonstration and emotion. From toda to hala to yada to barak. Every one of them, even worship, prosconios, it means to prostrate and it means to move. And it means to kiss. You can't kiss without showing affection. So, so turn to somebody and say, stop all this, your dignity, dignity thing in church. Stop it. Amen? Put it all aside and be a true believer. There got to be some expression. I said, your ladder will be greater. The more you can say it and scream it and believe it, the quicker it comes to pass. And the fact that you are not saying anything and expressing anything means unbelief and means doubt. It means you don't believe it. But if you believe it, you will say something. For the next time, your ladder will be greater. So, it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter the disappointment the setbacks. It doesn't matter the wasted years and it also doesn't matter how old you are. It don't matter how old because old age is in the mind. Your ladder, your ladder will be greater. 
altogether beautiful and better than your past. If you believe it, say yes. In Genesis chapter 1, I want to show you a principle. God said eight times, let there be, let there be, let there be. And six times God saw. God said and God saw. God said and God saw. Tell somebody, you see what you say. Give me some, give me some expression here. Give me some expression. Remember, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the classroom and I'm not your teacher. Amen. Even though I am in a way a rabbi, I, I'm not a lecturer. Amen. So don't sit down there looking at me to just feed you without an expression. You know, most times when I travel, I take my wife's picture with me and every now and then I'll look at the picture and I'll just admire her and I just say, baby, you're pretty, you're beautiful. I'm coming home. When I, when I get home, I don't look at the picture. I put the picture aside. Amen. And I give her a hug and I kiss her. When I hug her and kiss her, I don't want her being stiff and looking at me some way like a picture. I need some action and response. Come on, somebody. Look, look at you. Look at you sitting there looking at me like an angel and you are no angel. You got some feelings and emotions. Come on, put your hands together. Give me some expression. So, tell somebody with some audacity that you see what you say. So if you don't say anything, you don't see anything. It's a principle. It's a principle. Remember that. It's a principle. So come with me to 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according, according as it is written, written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. What do you do when you believe? Talk to me. I can't hear you. What do you do when you believe? Tell, turn to someone and say, speak therefore what you believe. Speak what you believe. Speak. Speak what you believe. Jeremiah 1.12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I, have hast, I will hasten my word to perform it. Thou hast what? Well, well, well seen. seen. You've seen what I have said. And because you've seen what I have said, I will bring it to pass. Say yes. Luke 1, 45. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her. There will be a performance because, because, it was told because, because she believed the thing that was told her. And what was her response? Be it unto me according to thy word. Say yes. She was not silent. She was not quiet. She responded by belief. By faith. And what was the belief and the faith? She said, be unto me according to what? Thy word. And the angel said, because she believed and she responded by saying something, there shall be a performance. Tell somebody, say something. And put your hands together. I'm going to work you. I'm going to work you out of that attitude of sitting down there and making church a boring place. My services are not going to be boring, so I'm talking to you dignified Christians. Stop all those boring stuff because I'm coming for you. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together. Acts chapter 27, verse 25. Acts 27, 25. Wherefore says, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. So Paul said, I believe. And because I believe, I want, I speak. He said exactly what was told him by the angel of the Lord. And he said, because I believe, I declare what I believe and I will see it. Are you hearing me, somebody? It shall be as it was told me means I'll see it. 
I will see it in my lifetime. Say everything that the Lord has said about me. And everything, come on, talk to me. Say everything that the Lord has said about me and that is written of me in the volumes of the book, I will see it come to pass in my lifetime. Say it with your mouth. And when you finish saying it, clap your hands if you believe it. I'm still not feeling you at all. Bishop Bodai, you, you are the teacher. I think you have all my notes. Get ready pretty soon. If they don't flow, I'll sit down and you come and teach. I, I'm not a lecturer. I'm telling you that I need a response. There are so many places when I go preaching, people don't even sit down. They stand on their feet. And I'm not telling you to stand on your feet to pretend. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that this is your cold attitude of sitting there for lecturing. I ain't one of those kind. So you better put your hands together. Mark 16, 20. Mark 16, 20. Mm -hmm. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. You see, so God will confirm his word. If we speak it, God will confirm it. If we don't speak it, he can't confirm it. God doesn't operate in void or in vacuums. He will confirm his word if we speak the word. And if we speak the word, we are putting faith into action because faith is activated or released by your mouth. You release faith by your mouth. And faith is of the heart and faith is in the heart. So whenever you speak by your mouth, you release faith. So if you don't speak, you keep faith restricted and dormant. Whenever you are silent, it means your faith is not working. You got to speak what you believe. Say yes. Isaiah 43, verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Uh -huh, 26. Put me in remembrance. Uh -huh. Let us plead together. Uh -huh. Declare thou that thou mayest be. How do you put him in remembrance? By declaring. By declaring. By declaring. How do you declare? With your mouth. Tell somebody your mouth, your mouth, your mouth. You open your mouth and you say what is written. And until you open your mouth and say and declare what is written, you don't have it. You only have it when you say what is written and what is in your heart that you believe. Say yes. Put your hands together and say yes. Come with me to Romans 10.10. 10. Romans 10.10. 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you can believe it in your heart. It doesn't matter what you believe in your heart. If you don't say it with your mouth, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that is the problem in the church. People don't believe. Because if you believe, you say it. And you keep saying it till you see it. And God said, and God saw. And God said, and God saw. You don't stop saying it until you see what you say. Amen. That is the rule. It's the principle of the kingdom. That's the way it works. You can't change it by me even praying for you. I can pray for you and exercise my faith on your behalf. But the fact of the matter is that you yourself need to believe and declare by your mouth what is in your heart. The word of God and faith. Say it. Tell somebody, until you say it, you don't have it. Tell them, keep saying it. Till it come to pass. All right, Genesis 1 31. Genesis 1 31. And God saw everything that he had made, mm -hmm. and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. How did God make it? How did he create it? <clears throat> God saw everything that he had made, <clears throat> that it was good or very good. How was it done? Through words. Say words. Talk to me. Say words. God said something. It's time to speak out. It's time to say something. You've held your peace for too long. You've been silent for too long. You've been quiet for too long. Doubting everything. 
You've been depressed for too long. It's time to say something. Tell two people, get up on your feet, give two people a high five and tell them it's time to say something. It's time to say something. Then clap your hands and be seated. I'm working you. <clears throat> Amen. I said, your ladder will be greater. The best of you is yet to come. If you believe it, say yes. If you believe it, give two people a high five and say, your ladder will be greater and the best of you is yet to come. Come on, somebody. Express it. Say it. That is an indication that you believe it. Those of you who are not saying anything, you are doubting. Saying nothing means you don't believe. But if you believe, you say something. Come on, somebody. I want to hear. Are there any believers in the house? Hallelujah. Give me Job 8 and 7. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Though thy beginning was small, yes, sir. yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Your ladder, your ladder, your ladder, your ladder. And it doesn't matter the disappointments. I have been betrayed. I have been thrown under the bus several times by loved ones. I have been used and exploited by so many over the years and the decades. But I still haven't given up hope. And it doesn't matter the levels of the exploitation done to me. There is more fish in the sea than what has been taken out. So I'm not going to worry about what has been taken. I'm going for fresh fish. I'm going for fresh things. I'm going for a new anointing. Come on, put your hands together. I'm not going to lament. I'm not going to lament about the past and yesterday. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. Say yes. Haggai 2.9 Haggai 2.9 The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. I, I, for those of you who have been with me and this house for 40 years and more and 30 years and 20 years and those of you who saw our beginning at the airport and Bishop James was talking to me yesterday and he, he he brought to my remembrance some of the things we've been through and suffered and places we've been over the years from my father's house to student hostel to uh, trade fair to uh, association school and, and to teacher's hall and Fadama in different, different places. We've been to places. We wandered for years, wandered all over this city, having no place to settle. Until 30 years ago, we found this place and we came in here. And when we came in here, it was as a desert. There was nothing here. And the Lord said, if you move the church to that place you call desert and wilderness, I will move the city to you. There was no light from shop right to Sakumono Junction. There was nothing here when we came. And I wasn't interested in buying more lands because I didn't really want to be here. I wanted to be in town. And today the town have shifted. Today the town has come here. Come on, somebody. I said your ladder will be greater than your past. If you believe it, put your hands together if you are a believer. Is there any believers in this house? And I know, I know that some of you are used to those days. The days of old, the worship of old. The praise of all and the preaching of all, but I dare you. And I came to announce to somebody that a new day is dawning. That is the rising up of a new breed and of a new generation. Come on, there is fresh oil and a new anointing in the atmosphere. Come on, somebody. If you believe it and you are a believer, put your hands together, say something. You know, early this morning, us. As I was praying, the Lord began to say, he said, I'm raising up new millionaires. I'm doing. He said, 
very insignificant people. You see them and there is nothing about them that shows that they are millionaires or they can ever be. But God said, I'm going to take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I'm going to do something so that those people who think they are the only ones who are loaded and they are the only ones blessed, God said, I will shock them. God said, I will go past them and I'm raising up a new generation, a new breed of men and women, new millionaires, new billionaires. And God said, money will change hands. Oh, power will change hands. If you believe it and you are a believer and you believe you are among the new generation that God is raising, then say something. Put your hands together and say something. And tell the Lord, Lord, I'm here. You can come to me. Here am I, Lord. I'm among the new generation, the new breed, the new millionaire. There is coming the emerging and the rising up of a new millionaires and billionaires in the kingdom and in the house of God. Money will change hands. Power will change hands. Come on, somebody. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. I don't know who I came to prophesy to this morning. But I have to prophesy so that God will perform his word. Are you hearing me? Give me Psalm 102 verse 20. Psalm 102 verse 20. No, 103 20. 103 20. 103 20. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, mm -hmm. that do his commandments, mm -hmm. hearkening unto the voice of his word. Tell somebody, give voice to the word. Give voice. Give voice. Tell somebody, whenever you speak the word, you have given voice. You are giving voice to the word. And the angels are waiting for you and I to give voice to the word so they can go to work. Is anybody hearing me? Oh, you are not hearing me. Is anybody here? Is there any believer in this house today? Come on, somebody say yes. Tell somebody, the angels are waiting. They are waiting for you to give voice to the word so they can go to work. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come with me to Job chapter 1 verse 3. Job chapter 1 verse 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. Put it on the screen. Put one on the side and one on the other side. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels. and So look, 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 at, look at what the man had. This guy was no joke. He was loaded. His beginning was heavy. He was a financial tycoon. He was a business magnet. He was a financial mogul. Tell somebody uh, you are sitting next to a mogul, to a mogul, a mogul, a mogul. Come on, say it, man. We say sitting next to a mogul, to a mogul. Tell somebody if you only know who you are sitting next to, you behave yourself. You behave yourself. Are you hearing me, somebody? Uh, the Bible said, for eyes have not seen. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together if you believe that. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has entered the hands of men what God has planned for this mogul sitting next to you. Come on, somebody. If you believe you are a mogul, say something. Say something. Because you will see what you say. You will see what you keep saying. And if you say nothing, you got nothing and you have nothing. That's what it is. Go ahead. A substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. So look at it. Look, look at the screen. These were the things he had before and these were the things he lost at his ladder when he was young he lost all these things you see here 7,000 3,000 500 500 and at the time his crisis came he was 70 years old now look at his ladder look at what is ahead of you look at the ladder of Job. Look at the ladder. Job 42 verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Oh, somebody did hear me. I said, somebody's ladder will be greater. Come on, somebody. Your ladder, your ladder is greater, better. 
Come on, somebody. All together, beautiful. And you know what? I don't care what the circumstances look like right now. You know, Abraham was so old that he didn't have unction to function. And God said, that's none of your business. I got what it takes to quicken your mortal body and quicken your organ and give you unction to function. Say yes. And Sarah said, shall I have pleasure in my old age? Then the Bible said, my people shall be fruitful even in their old age. So don't look at me without your look. Are you hearing me, somebody? God can quicken your bones. He can quicken the organs of your body. He can quicken your brain, your mind, your memory. I want every wife here whose husband is whole. When you go home, lay hands on him, pour anointing oil, and say, come on, baby, come alive again. Come on, baby. In the name of Jesus, I'm waking you up. And every wife, go home, lay hands on your wife, anoint them with oil, and wake them up. Say, I wake you up in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Say yes. If you're a believer, put your hands together. Say something. Now, so look at the things he lost when he was young, and look at his latter end. Go ahead, Bishop. For he had 14,000 sheep. So what? How many sheep did he lose? 7,000. Talk to me. He lost what? 7,000. And in his latter end, he had? 14,000. Come on, somebody. I don't like your attitude this morning. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, your ladder, your ladder, your ladder. Will be better. All together beautiful and greater than your past. If you believe it, put your hands up. Say something. Say out or amen. amen. That was the man's ladder. That was his ladder. And that is what's going to happen to you. Some of the things, I can't say it in details. You have to put it there yourself. You know exactly the things you've lost. I know what I have lost. And I am expecting in my lifetime. Say in my lifetime. In my lifetime. I will see every word of the Lord come to pass in my lifetime. And say, everything I have lost, my stolen goods, shall be returned in full, hundredfold, to me in my lifetime. In the name of Jesus, I will see it all come to pass. In my lifetime, in my lifetime, it shall come to pass. If you believe it, put your hands together and say it. Say yes. Bishop, go ahead. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels. Uh -huh. and so thousand... how many camels did he have? Before? 3,000. And then at his latter end? 6,000. Okay, go ahead. And a thousand yoke of oxen. No, go back. How many yoke of oxen did he have? 500. That was before? He lost them. And the latter end? A thousand. Double. Tell somebody double. So this is not restoration. This is compensation. Are you hearing me, somebody? God is about to compensate somebody. Yes, yes, yes. There is a compensation coming for somebody in your lifetime. Say yes. Now, this is more than restoration. As a matter of fact, it's even more than restitution. Because in, in restitution, it's not just what you did wrong and you are going to fix it. But in true restitution, we give you back what was taken from you with interest. Like you take loan from the bank, you pay back with interest. God said, whatever has been taken from you, I'm returning it with interest. I see your stolen goods returned with interest. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something. I said, say something. Come on, somebody. Say something. Do something. If you believe that it's coming back to you with interest, say yes. Now go ahead. Uh -huh. A thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses or uh -huh. donkeys. So he lost 500 female donkeys and uh -huh. ended with a thousand female donkeys. Now, look at how old was he when the affliction came? He was 70 years old. He was 70 years old and he lived another 70 more years. So he died at the age of 140. Come on. 
Come on. Tell somebody, make no mistake. I'm going to be here for a long time. Tell somebody, make no mistake. I will outlast all those who desire my hurt and demise. I will outlast and outlive them all. Make no mistake. What you are imagining of me is not God's plan for my life. That is your wish. That is your plan. That is your projection. But it's contrary to God's plan for my life. And I stand for God's plan. And I will say what God has said. Somebody say yes. <laughs> so Job had <clears throat> double. Double of everything. Tell somebody now double oh. Uh -huh. It's not just the song we sing, though. If you watch it, now double of everything. Double joy. Double anointing. Double peace. Double restoration. Double honor. Double glory. Double fulfillment. Double satisfaction. Double lifting. Now double. Double protection. Double vindication. Double deliverance. Double escapes. Hey, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Are there any believers in this house today? If there are some believers here, put your hands together and say something. Amen. Give me Job 42, 16 and 17. After this lived Job 140 years mm -hmm. and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. Mm -hmm. So Job died being old and full of days. Come on. He was not just old. Bishop Ben, Bishop Yanko, Bishop James, all my 70 elders. Eh? You are all above 70. Don't just be old. Be old and be full of days in good health, sound mind. Come on, somebody. If you believe, you will live long, old, full of days in good health, sound mind. Put your hands together. Say something. Say it, say it, say it. You will not see it until you say it. And I say, and I declare before heaven and earth and hell that I will live and be all full of days, full of many years, decades, in good health, with a sound mind. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say it, say it, say it. Say it. Hallelujah. Come with me to Proverbs 6, 30 and 31. Proverbs 6, 30 and 31. Quickly. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is angry. Mm -hmm. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. You see, so here again, God is talking about compensation. This is more than restoration. It's more than restitution. Bishop James. God is saying, give me your phone. Okay. I'm not the thief. A thief. I'm not the thief. A thief took your phone. One phone. And he said, the thief, when he's identifying that he's stolen Bishop James' phone, he must return seven times. Seven fold. Seven, listen. There are seven cell phones of the latest is coming to you. And Bishop James, not just seven phones of the latest, but also any other thing the thief stole from others that is in his house. All that is coming to you. Compensation. That is what is, that is, what is coming to you. Are you hearing me? Do you see how God, look at God mathematics. Look at God arithmetic. He said, one shall put a thousand to flight, so two shall put two thousand. But God said, no. When I'm restoring, it is multiplication and not addition. So God said, instead of two having two thousand, I'll give you ten thousand because I'm in the business of multiplication. Put your hands together. Say yes. I can't hear you. Somebody say yes. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him. What is it to make all grace abound? Following James. All grace abound towards you that you have insufficiency in all things. Yeah. Yeah. 
Finish this and go to 2 Corinthians 9 8. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. He's able to do. God is able to do. He's able to do what? Exceeding abundantly. And what? Exceeding abundantly. And what? Abundantly. Yes, sir. Above all. That Above all that, that you can never think nor imagine. Tell somebody, take the limits of God. Take the limits of, take the limits of. Lay your hands on your head and I say, I, say, I break the limits of, I break the doubt that limits and the unbelieving, I break it off me in the name of Jesus. You know what the limitation is? It's not God, it's you. Somebody, tell somebody, take the limits of God. Take the limits of God. Yes, sir. The Bible said, open your mouth small. Open your mouth small and I'll feel it. But open it what? What it means is the extent to which you open your mouth is the extent to which God pours the blessing. Then God said to Abraham, God said to Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up thy eyes. Lift up your eyes from where thou art. And he said, look to the north. Look to the east, the south, the west. And he said, as far as you can see, as far as, tell somebody, as far as, that is the word, as far as, so tell someone, take the limits off. Say in the name of Jesus, I break the limits. I lift the embargoes over my faith over my belief system as I put my hands to God, break the limits I leave the embargoes pray that prayer right now breaking the limits lifting the embargoes in the name of Jesus breaking the limits lifting the embargoes right now in Jesus name Amen 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 look at it and God is able to make all grace abound God is, toward you. It's able. God is able. God is able. Uh huh. To make all grace. To make some, some, no. some. But what? All grace. Oh God. Uh -huh. Abound toward you. Towards? Toward you. That uh -huh. you always have been all sufficient. That you every now and then. No sir. Some seasons. No sir. But what? Always. Oh. I can't hear you. Are there any believers here? Always. Can you hear you? Somebody talk to me. Always. And I can't feel you. Always. Uh -huh. Having all sufficiency. All sufficiency. Some sufficiency. No, sir. Some sufficiency. No, sir. But what? All sufficiency. I was talking to somebody the other day and said, Papa, I'm planning the budgets and the finances it's not adding up and I said can I be honest with you as long as you live with the way the world economy is going and how few individuals control the entire world of the world and how greedy people are and it's never enough I said your budget and calculation arithmetic you know and your mathematics is not going to work. So he said, what do I do? I said, raise the level of your faith. Believe God for more. I said, believe God for more. Believe God for supernatural provision. And I said, believe God for more provision than the demands. Because the demands is always going to rise. But believe God that the supply will be more than the demands. Come on, somebody. Say, I believe God for more supply than the demands. If you believe it and you are a believer, say something and put your hands together. Uh-huh. Go ahead. That you always have all sufficiency in all things. In all things? In yeah. some things? No, sir. In some things? No. In what? All things. Yes, sir. Go ahead. May abound to every good way. And that's the problem. That's the problem with believers. We don't abound to every good work. We get so blessed. And when we get blessed with all things, we lose our humility and we lose our humanity. And suddenly, we become a boss of others, including the leaders of the church. We want to lord it over everybody and lord it over the Lord himself. Lord it over angels. We want everybody to know we got it and we are loaded. We lose our humanity. No value for people, no respect for humanity very arrogant, snobbish, despising people.
despises of men, ungrateful, unthankfulness. We never know how to say thank you. Don't return people's call. You don't reach out to people you used to reach out to before. You change. You change. You become something else. And the wealth is what determines who you have become. And if you are one, if you are one, whose attitude and the way you treat people is determined by what you have and where you are, then you are very poor. You're very poor. As I said the other day, that so many people in this world are so poor that all they have is money and power. When you take away their money and their power, they don't have anything. And I was talking about, you know, President Kufu, even President Rawlings. After he was out of office, I always go see him. And whenever you go, there are people there. And the man hadn't changed. He didn't have power like he had before. President Rawlings said to me several times, he said, you know, he used to call me chief. He said, chief, I have many things. There are many things I see I can do and I can change. But the power to do it is no more with me. So power has an expiry date. Those of you who think you are so powerful, it's a matter of time. I was, talk, I was talking to some very powerful person last week, very, very powerful in another country. And I was reminding him that power has an expiry date. And I said, sir, you are very powerful today, oh. You are very powerful. But there will come a time when another will take your place. When another will take your office. So I said, have that in mind. And I said, how do you want to be remembered? Because many powerful individuals have risen and have left the scene. And are no more on the scenes. And you, you know what it takes for people to be humble? Study history. Study history. Study history about the great ones, the great pharaohs, and the great empires of Rome, and the great kings of Great Britain, and the queens of Great Britain, and the great kings of the Babylonian Empire, and the Asian Empire, the Hasroses, and Alexander the Great of Greece. And so many other, even of the continent of Africa, I don't want to name names because this is where I'm from. But check it. Study history. From the Gaddafis the Great with all their wealth and influence and power. And so many others, when you check and look at history and the records, they have disappeared. There's no sign that they ever walked the face of this earth. But I believe that when my time is done and I've lived old in a full days full days and full of years good health and a sound mind and when the moment comes and I check out from time into eternity to see my savior my master Jesus the son of God generations that comes here after me will know that once upon a time a curse breaker walked the face of this earth come on somebody if you're hearing me put your hands together say something second kings 8 3 second kings 8 3 3 6 and it came to pass uh -huh. after seven years uh -huh. That the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. Uh -huh. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. Don't forget, this was the Shunammite woman. Who fed the prophet. Took care of God's prophet. And was blessed for taking care of God's prophet. Whenever you take care of God's business, he takes care of yours. And the prophet said, there is a famine coming in the land. So, sojourn. Go to the lands of the Philistines. Stay there for seven years. And he came back after seven years. Look at the next scripture. Verse 6. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. Mm -hmm. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer saying, mm -hmm. Restore all that was hers. Uh, was. Mm -hmm. Was. And Pastors. All, uh -huh. And all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until 
compensation. Give it back to her at today's market value. So let's say when President Kufour was in office, what was the dollar rate? What was the dollar? I think it was one to one in that time. Yeah. So you took my million dollars then? You going to pay me back? Don't try to give me back what you took from me according to today's. According to then, you pay me back according to today's. So if you took a million dollars then, you give me back 13 million dollars. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Uh -huh. Give somebody a high five and say compensation, compensation. You took a million dollars, you pay me 13 world million dollars. You can look at it any way you want to look at it, but these are the principles of the kingdom. And this is how I win my battle. Amen? This is how I win my battle. People look at me some way, they can't figure me out. You know why you can't figure me out? Because I win my battle by the principles of the word of God. I don't operate by the principles of this world. I'm telling you. Let, let me see how many business men and women and professionals we have here in me right now. Stand on your feet. If you're a businessman and woman and a professional, please stand. Please stand. Just stand wherever you are. Just stand for a minute. I want to prophesy. And I want to say you are among the new millionaires that are rising up. You are among the new billionaires. God is about to blow your mind. God is about to turn the table in your favor. God is about to change the rules in your favor. I'm telling you, the rules are turning. The rules are turning. God will change the rules for you. If you believe it, say yes. Now, keep these dates in mind. On the 20th of April, we are holding a breakfast and a lunch workshop. And it's about the business community and the professionals in the church networking, coming together as a community. Until you become a community, and until there is networking among you, you never make it. I'm just telling you. If you look at the Indian community in this country, and other countries. The Lebanese community, the Jewish community, and if you look at other communities, like the Chinese, even, do you know that there are Chinese in this country who sell Kenke? They're looking at me. And you think there's no man in Kenke, you want oil. They sell oil, they sell gold, they sell Kenke. Everything. They are taking over the business. They are a community. They are together. Until we become together and as a community, there's no future for us. I want to prophesy this. Hear me carefully as your spiritual father. I've sat down. I've studied this thing very carefully. The economy of this country is not controlled by Ghanaians. It's controlled by other people, by other tribes. And I don't want to go into it because some people are so foolish and lazy. Instead of them to get busy and do right, they'll go attacking some other people. It's not about attacking them and criticizing them. It's about getting, doing the right thing and being better than them. Good is not enough. The enemy of better is good. So I know you're doing good, but you can do better. If we network, if we come together, you can do better. Now, at this summit for the business and professionals in this house, we are not charging, but you need to register. I don't know if there's the number on the screen, but you need to register and keep this date in your phone. Register it right now in your phone. It begins at 8 a.m. in the morning. I believe it's a Saturday, the 20th of April. You can't miss it. You got to be there. And there's coming people from all over. We are, we are flying in some of the best. I won't tell you who they are and their names. Because some of you start Googling and trying to make contacts and things before time. You don't have to make any contact. Make contacts among yourself. Get to know each other. And if, we, if you need a carpenter, let the carpenters among us be faithful. And let's use the carpenters among us so the money stays in our camp. If you need a painter, a mason, an architect, whatever, doctors, lawyers, whatever you need, they are among us. They are among us. We have everything you can imagine in this house. There is no need going out there seeking for anybody. But we must learn to be a community. We must network. Until we network and we become a community, there is no hope for us. I'm just telling you. I'm prophesying as your spiritual father. 
hear me and hear me well. We are always better together than alone. Tell two people, we are better together than alone. You may not agree with me, you may not believe it, but just do what I'm telling you. Just network and tell, I know you have reasons why you don't want to belong. You have reasons. You've been wounded. You've been betrayed. You've been exploited. You've been used. Yes, I have been. You've been raped. I have been. All kinds of things have been done to me over the years. But it will not stop me. It, it's not going to stop me being what God called me to be. I'm still going to preach. I'm still going to love. And I'm not going to be bitter. And I'm not going to walk in bitterness or offense. I'm still going to love anyway. I've been misunderstood. People have used my platform. And all kinds of things have been done to me that I don't even want to talk about it because it will make me petty. But let me tell you something. None of those things matters because I know that my ladder will be greater than my past. And you know why? You know why I'm not bitter? You know why I'm not bitter? Because I'm better today than I was yesterday. I'm wiser today than I was yesterday. You see, and I have learned obedience. You see, you can never learn obedience in life till you suffered something. And the reason why people lack the ability to comply and they lack the ability to obey and to follow rules and the principles is because they haven't suffered anything. The Bible said, though he was a son, yet suffered, let, yet lent he obedience through the many things he suffered. If you don't suffer anything, you will never learn obedience. Obedience is a product of suffering. And I've learned obedience through many things that I've suffered. And I was telling somebody, I said, lasting success is a product of suffering. Pain. When a woman goes to the labor ward to give birth, she goes in there traveling in pain. But when the baby is about to come, I've been there a few times, and I'm told that they get into a level of pain and agony that doesn't make sense. It is... It is in that moment, dealing with that unbearable pain, that the head of the baby is positioned in the bed canal, ready to come down. Hear me, no pain, no gain. And you know why a lot of people, you know why a lot of people don't have lasting success? Because they try to dodge and avoid pain. Talk to anyone that has a lasting success. They've suffered something. They've been through some suffering. They've endured pain. If you can't handle pain, you never have a lasting success. Number two, if you want to have a lasting success, you must learn how to deal with shame. There are so many people, even in the pulpit, men and women of God, hearing me right now, they don't want to deal with shame. They want to be in the good books of people. They are two together, two dignified. One, you know, Jesus said, if all men speak well of you, woe are you if all men speak well of you. You are not a good disciple. I learned that long time ago, never to want to be in the good books of men. Because Jesus himself has to deal with shame before he was glorified. So if you can't deal with shame, you'll never have a lasting success. Look at everybody, Joseph. Look at Abraham, Moses. Everybody that became something and somebody in the Bible days and in our time had to deal with shame one way or the other. Shame is part of the process that we go through to obtain a lasting success. Learn to deal with shame. Stop explaining yourself because the more you explain yourself, you are losing there come a time when you have nothing to say. You owe nobody explanation. Say nothing. Hold your peace. Say, I hear you. Apart from shame, the next thing you must learn, if you want a lasting success, apart from pain or sufferings and shame, you got to get used to falling and rising. You looking at me? If you never fall, and rise up, you'll never have a lasting success. Everybody can be successful, 
but not everybody can keep it and maintain it. To maintain success, to outlive you, you got to learn how to fall and rise up. The Bible said, my enemy rejoice not over me, for when I fall, I will rise again. Tell somebody, get up, get up, get up, get up. Tell somebody, get up. Yeah, we know you are down right now, but get up. And you know why a lot of people don't get up? They don't get up because times are tough. Times are difficult, so they hide. Look at 1 Kings 17, 3. 1 Kings 17, 3. Yeah. Tell somebody you've been hiding for too long. You've been hiding for too long. It's time, it's time to re-emerge. Read. Get thee then hence mm -hmm. and turn thee eastward uh -huh. and hide thyself brook. Sorry. And do what? Hide thyself by the brook. And do what? Sorry. Hide thyself. Tell somebody you've been hiding for too long. You've been hiding for too long. Because you see, when you look at where you used to be, what you could do and what you used to do and you look at the circumstances right now if the brook has dried up nothing is working nothing seems to be working you can't pay your children's school fees you can't buy gas you can't feed your family you don't go out to restaurant you can't do the things you used to do you can't go first class business even economy you can't afford it so you're hiding turn to two people stand on your feet tell them tell them the time of hiding is over Come on, if I have some believers, say it, say it, say it. Whatever, whatever you are ashamed of, whatever you embarrass of, so you've been hiding, it's over. Put your hands together and clap and say it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. I can't hear you, say it's over. It's over. It's a new day. Okay, those, that is the information on the screen. That is the information. I don't see the telephone number here. Okay, but that is it. It will be at the Kairos or the 20th. It begins at 7.30 and it ends at 1 p.m. So make sure you have all this information. If you are in business and you are a professional, it's the networking of the business and professional community in the house. It's time for you to network. It's time for you to get to know one another. I see some of you all over the world and you are struggling. By one phone call of one, they can lift you above your, your, your circumstance. Two is better than one. Woe is it that is alone. And if you are a loner, the Bible says, Woe. Redeem yourself from woe. And network. Work with others. Block those days. Register. Be among the brethren. Okay, quickly. Ecclesiastic. Sit down. Put your hands together and sit down. Are you clapping? Your clapping is very weak and suspicious. And you can't clap without saying something. Say something. Ecclesiastes 8.4 Where the word of a king is, there is power. Mm -hmm. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So, there is power here. Because the word of the king of kings is here. Omnipotent power. Because the word of God is present. Give me some 62 verse 11. God has spoken once. Mm -hmm. Twice have I heard this. That power belongeth unto God. So power is God's. And there are principles and ways by which his power is activated. Look at Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So that they lent unto them such things as they required. Mm -hmm. And they spoiled Egyptians. Listen, your ladder, this is 400 years of slavery. The ancestors worked, labored for 400 years and they had nothing. When it came to their time and their generation, they broke the curse. They were the curse breakers of their day and of their time. And what their ancestors and forefathers were denied and deprived of was given unto them. I see fresh favor coming on somebody. I don't know who I came to talk to. I think those who I came to talk to will respond, they will clap, they will say something, they will stand, they will run, they will do something. There is coming a favor that every blessing that belonged to your bloodline that never came to them and was manifested during their day is coming to you and your generation. You will be the beneficiary of what they did not have. If you believe it, put your hands together and say something. 
Come on, say something. 400 years of slavery, deprived and denied, and God compensated them. Say, I obtained from the Lord. That is very, very weak. Come on, don't treat me that way. Say, I obtained of the Lord. By faith. In the name of Jesus. A divine compensation. You believe it? Put your hands together and give him praise. Now give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30, 17. 30, 17. For I will restore health unto thee, mm -hmm. and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith mm -hmm. the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, say, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You, you see, there come a time when you can be looked down upon. Despise. You become a proverb and a byword among the brethren. Even in church, they look at you some way. They see the car you drive to church. And some of you have been driving that same car since God said, let there be light. But it's coming a new day. I saw one of my bishops yesterday driving his new car. And I haven't seen him smile like that for a long, 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 long time since God said, let there be light. And yesterday, I saw him laughing with his kids in the car and his teeth were out. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see you laughing. I come on. I said, I see you laughing. God is going to do something for you that you will laugh. You will not grieve. You will not cry. But instead of crying and grieving, you're going to laugh. If you believe in laughter, put your hands together. Give him praise. Scream. Say something. You know, poverty is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you have been driving the same car every two minutes. It goes to the workshop. There is coming a day that is not just going to be one car. Oh, yes. You wake up in the morning and you don't know which car to use. The driver said, which of the cars, sir? Sir, sir, sir. And you'll be standing there trying to figure it out. And you have to pray in tongues to get a revelation of which car to use. Come on. The blessing is coming from every side. It will overwhelm you. Put your hands together. Say yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Ruth. 4, 15. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of the thing of thine old age. Mm -hmm. You will be nourished in your old age. Nourish in your old age. Go ahead. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons hath born him. Listen. Your life your life that you feel like you've lost. God said, I'm going to restore. I'm going to restore that kind of life and the style and the class. You used to have that, you've lost it. You know, there's a way people despise you and look down on you. When they look at you and they feel like, oh, what does he have? He doesn't have it anymore. Your glory, your glory, and your comeback is going to be greater than your past. I'm telling you, you know, I have come to so believe God that even when I'm down, even when I'm down, I believe. I will rise again. I will rise again. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemy, for when I fall, I will rise again. Come on, somebody. If you believe, you will rise again in everything, in every area of life. You will shine again. Put your hands together if you believe, you will shine again. I will shine again. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Make no mistake. If you think this is it for me, you are joking. I'm just beginning. I'm just beginning. Bishop Nyaku was reminding me when we met. 48 years ago we met. And I've been preaching for 47 years. And, and I still don't know the scriptures. This Bible, eh? In some way. The more I read it, the more I discover, I discover things. 
chapter and verses I have read over and over, I begin to see new light. That's what the Bible says, in thy light shall we see light. I begin to see things I never saw before. And I preach some things and I say, oh, I shouldn't have preached it that way. <laughs> but I preach it. And I preach it and I believe what I was preaching. 10, 20, 30 years from today, I'll preach this message again, but in another dimension. I'll come with a different light. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. And if you believe it, say something. Say something. Amen. Amen. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, look at Psalm 51, verse 12. Quickly. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. You see, somebody's joy is being restored right now. Your joy is coming back. The joy of your salvation. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something. Psalm 84 verse 7. Psalm 84 verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Uh -huh. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. From strength to strength. Not from weakness to weakness. Not from weakness. I command your knees to be strengthened. I command your joints to be quickened. I command your marrow to be quickened and strengthened and renewed. And every organ of your body quickened and renewed. In the name of Jesus, right now, receive strength. Receive divine infusion, power, strength. Be quickened in the name of Jesus. Say, say, I will not die prematurely. And say, when it's time for me to go, I will not be bedridden. I will not be sick. I will not be incapacitated. Say, I will not die by land, by air, by water, or by food or drink, poisoning. You know, an old man passed away, and he called his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. He said, come, let me show you how a believer dies. Come on, somebody. I look forward for that moment. On that day, I'll call them all. And you see Job, four generation. He lived old, full of days, and he saw how many generations? Four generations. I will see four, five generations. I don't know about you, you can sit down there and hold your mouth, and you won't see anything. I said I will see four, five generations. Amen? Yeah. And at that moment, I will show them and say, you know what? The master is waiting for me. All of you gather. Let me show you how you check out. And there will be no tears and there will be no crying. Nobody will grieve because everybody is for fear. And I said, let me show you how to do it. Put your knees to your chest and push out. And say, Lakuta Wahadas. Le Matuka Dunda Gisava. Let the angels be positioned. Aluki Wahasan Kefalun, O armies of heaven, get ready. Kadila Kasun, Matakuda Kasa, Selukutunda Kasa. Until then, let no warlock and let no sorcerer, a principality, or a diviner, or a spiritual wickedness, and let no one anointed by God or the devil think they have power to exact on me or afflict me or to take my life for my life is in the hollow of his hands he alone determines my going out and my coming in and you were not there when I was called neither were you there when I was chosen and you did not anoint me and therefore you cannot determine the outcome of my days or my circumstances hold your peace shut your mouth and be silent stay on the side of your life the life don't even think it don't even imagine it don't even try it because it will backfire on you put your hands together let me finish quickly Isaiah 54 verse 12 58 verse 12 and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Build old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Yes, sir. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, mm -hmm. the restorer of paths to dwell in. Come on, somebody. Say, that is me. Tell somebody, say, that is you. That is you. 
Say, that is you. Come to Job, uh, uh, let me see, Joel 2.25. Joel 2.25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten. Say, restoration of wasted years. Now, we have all wasted some years, so all of us, including myself. We've wasted some years. Oh, I've sat down and I've taken stock and reflected on so many things. And I don't lament about it because it has made me wiser. Today, I am obedient about so many things than then. I'm better today than then. Oh, yes, I'm telling you. I've learned the highway. And it was good for me to be afflicted then because for now, I cannot miss and go through some things and make some mistakes today like I did then. So it's good for me. It's good for me that I was afflicted. It's good for me that I made certain mistakes I did many years ago because right now I can't afford some mistakes. So everything that has happened to me is working for my good. It's working for my good. It's made me a better person. I see people today, they say, they make one, they say, and I just look at them. So you are not saying, oh, I, say, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Just look at them, and I have come to know that God is my source. He is my shield, my glory, the lift up of my head, my exceeding great reward. I lean on no man, but on the everlasting arms. Lean in, lean. Save and secure God. Yeah. 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 Quickly, give me Zacharias 9.12, Zacharias 9.12, NLT, Isaiah 61 verse 7. Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope. I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. I'll repay how many? That is compensation, divine compensation. Get up from your seat. Go to two people and say, uh, that says the Lord. You, you are about to be compensated for all the sufferings of the past and the afflictions of yesterday. You are about to be compensated. That says the Lord. Give me Isaiah 61 and verse 7. Isaiah 61 and 7. For your shame, you shall have double. And confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. You see, I know that everyone here is dealing with some shame of the other. Your shame is not my shame. And mine is not yours. But everybody is dealing with some kind of embarrassment. Some kind of a discomfort. You see, a shame is a feeling of discomfort and restlessness and disease. But God said, for that, I will give you double honor. You, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I don't know who I came. I said, double honor is on the way. Double honor is being bestowed upon you. Say yes. Put your hands together and say yes. It's happening. It's happening. Give me Exodus. Exodus 22 and verse 4. And let us pray. 
if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. It's all about compensation today. And I need you for the next few minutes to prophesy and declare that this is your week of divine compensation. And everything the enemy took from you, I don't mind, and I don't care about who the enemy is, but God, God is waiting for you to make that declaration so that he will perform it. The angels are waiting, Hebrews 1.14, as a heir of salvation. The angels are waiting to take action. They will not act until you declare it. So right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, begin to command a divine compensation. Right now, by the word of the Lord, as you put your hands together, let there be double compensation, double honor for shame. Your ladder, your ladder, say it, my ladder. My ladder will be greater, greater than my past. Yes, sir. Greater than yesterday. No sadi kasun. Kedu la kitun kafalando kasun le wanga sun tu kandia la safalaki sun kilei tu kala kasu wata li kasun polabi kasan tu kala kasata. Lift up your hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. Say in the name of Jesus. By the lifting up of my hands, I intercept fiery doubts, fiery doubts. I intercept doubts, unbelief, fears, unforeseen crisis, unforeseen storms, turbulence, strange winds, bad weather patterns, any interference in the name of Jesus concerning my latter, say any programming, calculation of the enemy, manipulation of men and women against my ladder, my future, in the name of Jesus. Right now, I intercept any such thing as I put my hands together. I intercept, 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 intercept. I intercept, I intercept every hidden agenda of men, of the enemy, to hurt, to undermine, to sabotage my future, that of my seed and offspring. I intercept in the name of Jesus. I intercept fiery doubt. I quench strange fires. Now, lift it up one more time. Say in the name of Jesus, I intercept strange fires, setbacks of any kind, shape or form. Say I intercept any saboteurs in the name of Jesus right now I intercept saboteurs and say in the name of Jesus I intercept any imagination and anything that exalted itself 2 Corinthians 10 5 anything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God in me and the knowledge of God that I have received about my latter end right now. Let that knowledge, let that voice, let any high thing, any stronghold opposing my knowledge of the word of God right now. I intercept, I abolish, dismantle, demolish. Put your hands together. Abolish, dismantle, demolish. Abolish, dismantle, demolish. Every argument, every argument. Abolish, dismantle, abolish, dismantle. I abolish and I dismantle. In the name of Jesus, I abolish, I dismantle thoughts, imagination, reasoning, strongholds, any high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God in me. Let it be abolished, abolished, abolished in the name of Jesus. Brought to a halt in the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Say, I silence the voices of whisperers. See, any whisperings in my subconsciousness, any whispering, anyone, anywhere, whispering evil, doubt, ill of me anywhere in the name of Jesus and of my offspring, let their voices be silenced right now. Whoever they are, 
whatever they put on, silence them. Let their voices be silenced. I silence whisperers. I silence the voice of doubt, fear, unbelief, threatenings, deception, bewitchment, the voice of warlocks. Let their voices be silenced. Shut them out of every adversary. Now, lastly, lastly, the Bible said when they took Daniel into the dens of lions, an angel of the Lord came and shut the mouth of the lions. There are some mouths, eh? Unless they are shut, they will always oppose you. Today, any mouth, anywhere, that the enemy is using against us, by divine authority, I command, let that mouth be shut. We shut their mouth on the political scene, on the financial scene, on the religious scene, on the media scene, on the economic scene, on the social scene. Wherever those mouths are, speaking evil and ill of us and of this house and of our nation, today in the name of Jesus, we shut those mouths. Put your hands down. Shut that mouth. Shut it. I can't hear you. You have been too religious. Shut them out. And the Lord has shut them out of the lion. Shut them out of lions, dragons, beasts, crocodiles, elephants, tigers. Shut their mouth. In the name of Jesus, shut their mouth. Lastly, lift up your right arm. Lastly, Psalm 140, Psalm 124, verse 7. Say, I command my escape from every entrapment, ambushment, snares, programmings, calculations, mischiefs of men and women in the air, on land, on water. Say, I command and decree my escape and the escape of all my loved ones between now and the end of the year. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together by the blood of the covenant. I command divine escape, 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 escape in the air, escape on land, escape on water, escape within and without, escape domestic and external, escape. Declare escape, escape, escape medically, escape medically, escape. Financial escape, escape in every shape and form, escape in the name of Jesus, escape. Lift up your hands. Lift it up, lift it up. Yeah. In a Lift it up, lift it up, open your mouth and sing it.
every head smile. If you are here, you say, Preacher, I've heard a lot. I need the assurance of salvation, of redemption, of pardon and forgiveness of my sins. I need the assurance that my name is written in the book of life. For there will come a day, ladies and gentlemen, those of you online and present with me, there will come a day when the books will be opened, Revelation 20, and another book shall be opened. And whosoever name is not found in that book of life will make it. I don't want you to miss that moment. If you are here and online and you are not sure your name is written in that book, I want to pray for you right now to live here with that assurance. Lift up your right hand and say, Preacher, pray for me right now. I want that assurance. If your hand is lifted up, I can see it. I see it. Come to me right now. Come. Come to the front. Let us pray. Why is everybody praying? Please come. I see you. Your hand is lifted up. Just take your Bible and come. Take your belonging. Just come. Let me pray that prayer for you. Come. Is anybody coming? Please come. Please come. Today, you have the right to decide. But a day will come when it will be too late. And you will lose your right to make that decision. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after that comes judgment. If you are here also, and you say, I used to be in church, but I backslided. I used to pray. I used to fast. I used to study the Bible. I used to dream. I saw things before they came to pass. I've lost it all. I've lost my spiritual. I've become lukewarm. I want to be back. I want to be revived. I want to be restored. Will you please come? Please join us right now. Please come. Please come. Please come. I want to be back home. And if you don't have a Bible-believing church, and you want to belong. No soldier goes to war alone. You have to belong. Please come. I want to be part of this kingdom community. I want to be part of this network of God's people. Please come. All right. Everybody say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that in sin, did my mother conceive me? Today, I declare my need of you, Lord. I need a savior. Lord Jesus, I need you. And I acknowledge you as savior and Lord of my life. Write my name in the book of life. Cleanse me with your blood. Forgive me. I'll be forgiven. Cleanse me. And I'll be free of the shackles of sin. I give you my life. Amen. I want you to look at me. If you turn around, there's a gentleman in white over there. Go with him. He will give you something and come back. Put your hands together for them as they go. Are you clapping? Now, give me Hebrews. Hebrews 7, 8. Hebrews 7, 8. It's New Testament. It's not Old Testament. And I told you the other day that there were things that ended at the cross. And there were things that went past the cross. Titan was before the Mosaic law. And Titan was one of the things that went past the cross. Praise and worship went past the cross. Fasting and prayer went past the cross. Communion went past the cross. So many things went past the cross. And certain things ended at the cross. Titan did not end at the cross. Make no mistake, let nobody fool you. The first billionaire of this world was a corporate titan by the name of John Rockefeller. So let no man deceive you. Make no mistake. Let nobody whisper lies to you and try to play with your intellectual capabilities and senses. They are fooling you. You never go wrong when you fulfill the principles of the kingdom. The kingdom has its own principles and networks and ways to pray. One of the ways is what we are doing on the 20th of April. Coming together, being part of the community of the people of God. And learning not to be alone and to stand alone. Please come forward with your tithes, vows, and first fruits. Thank you, Lord. Bless them as they come from all over. And those of you online, follow all the giving platform online. As we live prayer right now, please come. Bishop, Bishop David, come pray for us, please. Come with your tithe and everybody stand with your offerings. 
And remember, you always reap more than you sow. You always reap more. That's why the Bible says it's more blessed in giving than to receive. You always reap more than you sow. Please come forward with your tithes, first fruits, and vows, and stand with your offerings. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate our Papa for that powerful word. Indeed, your latter will be greater than your former. Oh, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. Psalm 65, Psalm 65 from verse 1. Psalm 65 from verse 1. It says, Praise waited for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. Let's look at verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. O thou that answered prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Please lift up your time. Father, all flesh are in your presence, performing their vows, performing obligations, under the influence of your Holy Spirit. You, God, cannot lie and you do not lie and you have a signature of faithfulness tested from ages past until now and by this we declare that as your people have brought their tithe you will honor your word because it is already honored in heaven it is an ordinance that cannot be defied because they have brought their tithe Father, let the windows of heaven be open. In the name of Jesus, grant your people intelligence and access to new ways of making revenue. In the name of Jesus, wisdom to take over the marketplace because they have brought their tithe. And indeed, in the midst of that blessing and abundance, let the devourer be rebuked. We declare that nothing will diminish the blessing that you put in the hands of your people. Nothing will rob them of their increase. Nothing shall by any means take away from their hands what God has designated and purposed for them. Because this is an eternal decree and it is an ordinance that cannot be changed. Let your people be fruitful. Let the tide speak for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, let blessings without limitations, blessings without interference, blessing without opposition be released into the hands, the families, the businesses of your people. Let the church also be blessed. Let them be partakers of the blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, and even as we enter the business forum, Father, we decree and declare by this network there will be increase in your house. An increase that the enemy cannot stop. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, we declare it done with a loud amen. Please put your time on the altar. Pick up your offering. Let's stand to our feet. As you lift it up to the Lord, may he honor what you give to his house. Let the resources of this house, the grace, the anointing, and the blessing of this house make contact with your offering. In the mighty name of Jesus, let God take notice, recognize your offering, and bring you abundant blessings. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please stand protocol will lead us as we give our offerings. Amen.
or visiting us in Action Chapel, we would like you to raise your hands. If this is the first time you're visiting us, you're a visitor today. Can you please rise on your feet? And can I ask you for one last thing? Can you kindly come forward? If you have your bag, especially the ladies, kindly bring it forward with you. Church, let's clap for them. It's not easy to walk down at all. You may also be here and you have been visiting us for a while and you want to be part of the Action Chapel family, if you could also come forward. You want to be a curse breaker? You want your latter to be greater than your former? You want to join that family? Kindly come forward. Wow, let's keep clapping for them. Kindly come, especially ladies, bring your bags with you. I want to welcome you on behalf of His Eminence, the Archbishop, and the College of Bishops. Oh, wow, that's my colleague. Yes, we want to welcome you. We want you to keep visiting us. We don't want this to be the first and the last. And there's a gentleman behind us in white. He will give you a gift from the Archbishop. Thank you very much. Please turn behind. Church, we have been blessed with hands. People don't have hands. People don't know how to thank God. And as we are thanking God for their lives, God is doing a new thing in ours. Wow, let's keep clapping for them. They have quite a distance to walk. They have quite a distance to walk. As we commemorate today the triumphant entry of Jesus, let us turn to the announcements. Thank you. Welcome to Action. Unto the Lord be the glory, great things he has done and greater things he is going to do for us. Wow, I have, I don't know about you, but I have missed praying. I have missed being a part of this one million strong. His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams wants you to unite and join one million strong people in daily prayers for breakthrough strategic prayer for the needs of our families and the challenges within the nations of our world. This is a special invitation from His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. I want to invite you to join with me as you register to become part of the One Million Tribe. It's a strong army that God has placed on my heart to bring together, to deploy and engage one million strong Christians, believers, intercessors across all the nations of the world that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that we will have the voice of men and women like you and I all across the nations and the globe rising up to heaven and sending incense up into heaven because until prayer goes up God can do nothing for humanity you can't afford not to be part of this one million strong tribe and army join it now every evil pattern and demonic cycle in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus is coming to an end. Somebody say yes! Say we are fed! Surprise attack in the air, on land, on water, at home, at the school, in public places. Every surprise attack in the name of Jesus. Say we intercept and we avert it now. Put your hands together.
It's good to be with you and thank you for tuning in. Today I want to talk to you about one of the five series of some of my books that have been released. Uh, the Bible said you err because you know not the scriptures. There is something about having understanding through the study of the books. This book, Beyond the Valley, that deals with mastering of faith, the mastering of the test of love and the test of character and the test of faith I believe will impact your life. So many people struggle at the place of the valley, at the valley, at the valley. But the valley is not a bad place to be. Whenever you find your place at the valley, uh, realize that the next place after the valley is your journey to the top of the mountain. There is no way you can climb a hill or a mountain in life without going through the valley. So when you find yourself right at the place of a valley, it's an indication that you are bound to begin your journey of climbing the mountain or the hill. And so never be afraid when you find yourself in the valley. Every now and then, before you climb a mountain, you will go through a valley. And the valley is part of the process that we all have to go through before we get to the top of the mountain. And so if you are in a valley in your life right now, don't be afraid, don't be despair. For the prophet said the other day, he said, my enemy rejoice not over me, for when I fall, I will rise again. Most times when you are down in the valley, it's like that is the end of it, but it's not. That is just the beginning. You will rise again and you will begin your journey from where you are and climb. So get this book, Beyond the Valley, a test of faith, love and of character to impact your life. It will give you keys to longevity. God bless you. Duncan Williams Partnership Program is an exclusive opportunity to partner with the Archbishop to transform lives and the nations of our world. Becoming an NDW partner is an opportunity to become a Kingdom Agent for Change. Your support allows the ministry to provide global revival services, summits for prayer and intercession training, support and training for bishops and pastors, and support for youth development programs, orphanages, and outreach programs. Partner benefits include partnership updates and prayer alerts from the Archbishop, free ministry resources, exclusive invites to online prayer sessions and live events, partner-only opportunities to travel to Israel and Ghana. Become a game changer today with the Nicholas Duncan Williams Partnership Program. Register now and go online and uncover the power of partnership. Nicholas Duncan Williams Partnership Programme is an exclusive opportunity to partner with the Archbishop to transform lives and the nations of our world. Becoming an NDW partner is an opportunity to become a Kingdom Agent for Change. Your support allows the ministry to provide global revival services, summits for prayer and intercession training, support and training for bishops and pastors, and support for youth development programs, orphanages, and outreach programs. Partner benefits include partnership updates and prayer alerts from the Archbishop, free ministry resources, exclusive invites to online prayer sessions and live events, partner-only opportunities to travel to Israel and Ghana. Become a game changer today with the Nicholas Duncan Williams Partnership Program. Register now and go online and uncover the power of partnership. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today I want to talk to you about the importance of one of the books uh, I have released among the many others that I believe will impact your life and will bless you. It's very, very critical in the times we live in 
for us to appreciate and understand process. The difference between the first Adam and the last Adam was process. The first Adam was made overnight. He didn't go through process. The last Adam went through process and learned obedience to the many things he suffered by process. When you don't go through process, you do not appreciate and know the value of a thing. The value of gold has everything to do with the process it went through before it was brought out. And if you look at the difference between King Saul and David, Saul was made king overnight. David went through process from the first anointing to the third anointing was 17 years. The first anointing was before his brethren, second anointing before Judah, third anointing before all of Israel, process. And that gave him longevity. And everything about life is about process. When you don't go through process, you have no understanding and value of a thing and what you have. So it's very, very important for you to get this book. Stop fighting the process. Go through the process. You will come out at the other side, a better person, a better individual. People who don't go through process and come into prominence are disaster. Money without purpose is disaster. Power without purpose is disaster. And so get understanding, this book, don't fight the process. Go through the process will cause you to have the keys that are necessary to guarantee your longevity. God bless you. Do you need to break free? from negative life cycles that keep repeating themselves in your relationships and families, stagnations and limitations in your career, spiritual life or finances. Do you need to break free from spiritual attacks, setbacks and feelings of oppression? God wants you to break loose and run free with the Nicholas Duncan Williams School of Ministry Binding the Strong Man course. This 100% online course will equip you to identify the negative strongman or force working in your situation. Give illumination to the Word of God and bring spiritual understanding to the evil limitations in your life. Reveal prayer strategies to deal with the strongman in every area of your life effectively. With the NDW School of Ministry, you'll benefit from exclusive impartational video teachings by the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, ministering specifically on strongholds biblical audio lessons, resource workbooks, flexible study options to study anytime, anywhere. Get started today. Visit us online at ndwministries.org. Get equipped, get empowered now. Unto the Lord be the glory, great things He has done and greater things He is going to do for us. Wow, I have, I don't know about you, but I have missed praying. I have missed being a part of this one million strong. His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams wants you to unite and join one million strong people in daily prayers for breakthrough strategic prayer for the needs of our families and the challenges within the nations of our world. This is a special invitation from His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. I want to invite you to join with me as you register to become part of the One Million Tribe. It's a strong army that God has placed on my heart to bring together to deploy and engage one million strong Christians, believers, intercessors across all the nations of the world that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that we will have the voice of men and women like you and I all across the nations and the globe rising up to heaven and sending incense up into heaven because until prayer goes up, God can do nothing for humanity. You can't afford not to be part of this one million strong tribe and army. 
join it now. Five members, all oh, rise up and give us a wave. Hallelujah. Rise, rise, rise. Let's see you in your white, beautiful. Oh, put your hands together for the match bonds. May the Lord continue to bless you. May he enlarge your coast. And may you enjoy many years of great celebration in Jesus' name. Amen. The official celebration is in the second service. So God bless you. Thank you for coming for the first. Shall we all please stand? If you're traveling this week, please come forward. Let's cover you before you go. For today, we have next-gen service at 5 p.m. So don't forget, there's a next-gen service at 5 p.m. today. The new package begins from May. For tonight, there's next-gen at 5 p.m. Hallelujah. Don't forget, command your week. It's tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. Please come forward. Let's worship as we invite our Papa to please close us. With our hands lifted up. Lift up your hands. Say, Heavenly Father, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, we activate your promises concerning journey messes, concerning safe passage, angelic escorts, protection and assistance of your angels for your children traveling across the nations from Africa to the Middle East, from the Middle East to Asia, from Asia to Europe, from Europe to North and South America, let the angels of Almighty God be dispatched, be deployed, engage on the behalf of everyone that named the name of Jesus. The Redeemer of the Lord, grant a safe passage to your children as we obtain journey messages for every traveler traveling by land, by air, by water, that thou mightest grant them Journey messes. We secure the movements of your people by angelic escort, angelic assistance. We declare there will be no surprises. There will be no strange incidents or happening with any of your people traveling that concerns this house, home and abroad. We secure every loved one. We secure the airwaves in the name of Jesus, the land and the high sea, securing all things in the name of Jesus. And right now, we command divine protection, preservation, escapes, as we put our hands together for every traveler. We command, we command, we command divine protection, protection, escapes, escapes, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. Escapes, deliverance, preservation, preservation, preservation for every traveler, home and abroad. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Now with your hands lifted up, wherever you are, whoever you are, the Lord satisfy you and all that concerns you with long life. See his goodness in the land of the living. The very God of peace give you peace always. 2 Thessalonians 3, 16, by all means, by all means, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, 
by all means. Declare, I declare with my mouth that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in my lifetime. In the name of Jesus, I declare my ladder will be greater than my past. You believe it? Tell two or three people at the mouth of two and three witnesses. Tell them my ladder, my ladder will be greater. Greater, greater than my past. Say it, if you believe it, clap your hands, scream it, shout it, say yes, say something.